I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Count a blessing to be back here on the Shorter College campus. And before we do anything, let us acknowledge God in prayer, please. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share with these, my friends, at this awesome place. And we just pray that you will empty me out, that you will move me, and that your Holy Spirit come in and dwell and make a difference. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to thank the uh, Shorter College Administration and uh, Dr. Whitlow for having me here. I want to acknowledge Dr. Dallas. I don't see him, but I want to acknowledge him. I've been here before. It's been a few years, but just grateful for this opportunity. Um, let me give you my subject, then I'll give you a little introduction, and I have one scripture I'll sh share that I want you to write down, and then I'll have another scripture that I'll just uh, make mention of. But I want to talk from this train of thought. I want you to stay focused. Look at your neighbor, and I know you're masked, but just look at him and just say, stay focused. Mm-hmm, I got you. Stay focused. Mm -hmm. All right. So, again, what an awesome privilege it is for me to come back to my old alma mater. I graduated from Shorter College in 1976. Yeah, you weren't born then. I graduated before you were born, probably. Uh, at, but I was blessed to uh, be a communications major. Miss Betty Zane Morris, she's still with us, and she was my consultant and kept me on a straight and narrow path um, because as a college student, I did have some, some days, and I know you know what I'm talking about. I did some things that probably I shouldn't have been doing uh, it really wasn't my fault. This herbal stuff kind of got in my way sometimes, but I got over that, amen, and I'm doing just fine. God has been good to me, and I am a communications major, and I hope that um, you look over my ebonics and my mispronunciations, but I am a communications major. I've been in ministry for 43 years now. I've been at Lovejoy Baptist Church come November uh, 33 years. I've been blessed to publish four books. And um, I write an a article in the newspaper once a month here uh, at, in the Rome News Tribune. But more than that, I've been blessed to be married to the same woman for 45 years. She's put up with me, and uh, she's been an inspiration to my life. And um, I'm the head of my house. I am. I do. And what I say goes, you know, I have the last word. Sometimes it's yes, ma'am, but I do have the last word, uh, and uh, I have no problem with that. So in 45 years, we've had three children. All of them uh, have been blessed to have uh, go to school and get degrees, some uh, on a higher level, master's program, and one uh, working on her doctor's degree. So I have three beautiful children and five beautiful grandchildren. And I say that all because I learned to how to stay focused on things that were in my life that were before me. And I want you to do that. But it's a different world than where I came from. And that is my concern with you today. We're living in a world that I've never seen before. A news reporter once asked someone, what are the two greatest problems facing America? And the man answered, I really don't know and I really don't care. And the newspaper said, that's the problem. I really don't know is ignorance. I really don't care. It's apathy. And the point that I'm making is at some point in time and place in space, we have got to care. We have got to get out of our comfort zones and do something to make a difference in this world. God brought us into this world, seven and a half billion people plus on the planet Earth, and not a, two of them are the same. Not a single fingerprint. I can't wrap my mind around that. I don't know about you, but neither one of us are the same. Which says to me that God has something for each and every one of us to do that nobody can do but you. But you've got to find and fulfill your destiny. We're living in times, brothers and sisters, where, and I won't go into detail because I don't, I don't want to make this, well, let me just say this. I'm concerned about the fires out west, the recent hurricanes and storms uh, all up the 
uh, in the Gulf of Mexico and up the East Coast, um, the political climate, the racial divide. Plus, all of us have our own individual problems as well, don't we? Situations that we have to deal with and go through. But the one that stands out right now that we're all dealing with is the coronavirus. That more than anything else. CD19 virus or whatever you want to call it. But what if I told you that there's a virus out that's worse than that? And it is. It's very real. There's a virus out right now worse than the coronavirus. The virus I call sin. And it's very real. Because it not only, sin not only takes you out of this world, but it takes you and if you're not in a relationship with God, into eternal damnation. And that's what bothers me. We, don't, we live in a world where what used to be a sin is not a sin to some people anymore. Whatever suits me, whatever fits me, I'm okay. Just leave me alone. Let me be me, you do you, and all that kind of stuff. And that bothers me. We live in a time when many of our moral and ethical values that once formed the infrastructure of our nation and are crumbling before our eyes. So we must find our calling, find and fulfill our purpose, and make a difference in this world. And the way that you do that is to stay focused. Now when I say stay focused, I'm sure that many of you have several things that you have in mind that you want to stay focused about. I see some athletic uh, teams that are here, and. I know you want to stay focused on your grades, uh, on your class, and do well with that. And uh, you might have a special friend, a boyfriend, or what have you, girlfriend, and you want to stay focused, um, or you want him or her to stay focused. And uh, I wish you wouldn't focus that way at all, but that's another story, too. But um, all I'm trying to get you to see is that staying focused is very important. Because when you stay focused on whatever it is you're, you're, you've set out to do, there will come a time that you can make a difference. Now, the scripture that I want to share, that I want you, you can write this down and just keep it in your mind, that I'm going to read to you, explains what I'm trying to say. Because you're going to have the option of staying focused on the good things, or you're going to stay focused on things that's going to bring you down into this world. And trust me, I know about that. So I'm reading from Galatians, the fifth chapter, the 16th through the 23rd verse. These are the words of the Apostle Paul to the Galatians when he was trying to encourage them that they should walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Listen to it. Galatians 5, 16 through the 23rd verse, and it says, and I'm reading the English Standard Version because it breaks the words down and makes it very, a little more easier to understand. Paul says, but I say to you, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. But these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things that you want to do. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the evidence of the flesh, here they are. Watch this, y'all. Now the, ev the, now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalry, dissension, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these, Paul says, he says, I warned you, as I warned you before, that those who do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Please, please look at Galatians 5 and read that once or twice a week. Then he gives us the hope, and that is the fruit of the Spirit. In the 22nd uh, verse, he says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And I love this part. He says, and against such there is no law, which says to me, if I have these nine fruit of the spirit, I can live in this world 
And I'm not, I don't have to worry about breaking any law of the Bible or, or, or any man's law. I will be just fine. I will be focused in the direction that God would have me to be. And to me, the greatest of all of these fruit is love. I see love as like an axle on a bicycle and spinning off of love is, love is joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, meekness, temperance, faith, gentleness. Against such there is no law. But the key to it is you have to have love first. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13 gives us the preeminence of love. And it, and it talks about of all of the things that you may have, if you don't have love, you're just a, a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. It goes on to say things like love beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things, and that love never fails. And understand what I'm saying. I'm not ta- I, when I say love, I'm not talking about lust. Baby, you know I love you. No. <laughs> Baby, you know I lust you. That's what he's saying. Yeah, tell him I said so. Because if he really loves you, he'll wait on you. Yeah, I ain't trying to make no friends up here. I'm not to tell you the truth. But here's my real point about love. Think about this. If everybody really studied love, because he said, love hopeth all things, believeth all things, beareth all things. And then he says, have, at the end of it, 13th uh, chapter, he says, at the end of it, he says, now about it, faith, hope, and charity. The greatest of these is charity, which is love. You want to know what's wrong with the world? People don't love any, anymore. And I don't know if we ever have loved the way God wanted us to love, but I am convinced that we can... S- that all of the world's problems could be solved if people just learn to love each other, forgive each other, meet people where they are. You're just as human as the next person. Anything I can point a finger at you about, I got three more coming back at myself. Who am I to judge or condemn anybody about anything? If I told you my whole story, you'd probably get up and walk out. Don't you look at me strange. If you told me your whole story, I'd probably get out and beat you out of here. Because you got a story too. But love can change that, y'all. Love is forgiving. Love is understanding. Love is patient. Love is the key. And one of the things I want you to stay focused on is love. Because love can take you where nothing else can I'm a witness. Because you do know at the end of the day, all we have is that that we have in the spirit. Physical things we don't have. If you were to read in Matthew, the 25th chapter, around the 14th verse, Jesus tells a story of uh, the stewards that he has. uh, These stewards, these guys that, uh, well, the story is, one man who uh, is, is affluent, he leaves his, uh, servants with a uh, certain amount of talents uh, and the talents really being money and, and he, he leaves it to them for them to invest. One has five, one has two, one has one and the one that has the five and the two, they double their, their, their gift. They invest it and they make money for him and um, he, he's very happy about that. He rewards them but the one that had the one talent and he gives you what you need, he gives you what you can handle. He puts no more on you than you're able to bear. So the one that had the one, he should have done something with it. He knew what he could do. But rather than use it, he, he took it and he buried it. And the end of the story is that uh, where the two that uh, trusted and invested and used their gifts and talents or used the money to invest, they were well rewarded. But the other one was kicked out of the man's uh, home, his property, and he suffered eternal damnation. And what that really says to me is that we're just stewards. You're in, you're in college and you're going to go out of here and you're going to do well. you got cars. You're going to one day have a good job and own a home, hopefully have a family and all those kind of things, buy clothes and go place and rah, 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 rah. And I'm, I want that. I want that for you, and that's going to happen. But let me tell you a real story, a real truth. It's not yours. 
If you think it's yours, whatever you have that you own right now that you possess, you say it's mine. When you die, take it with you. Mm -hmm. We're just stewards. We are just stewards. We own nothing but our soul. And that's why we must stay focused on the things of God. God, that if we stay focused on him, he will teach us, show us, he will help us to do well in school, he will t help us to love one another as we should be loved, he will help us to forgive things. It's amazing how people, I, I wish I had time to tell you the story that I've been through and some of the things I've been up against and how because I went through that and at first it hurt me, I was a preacher, I was a preacher but I was ready to but I didn't. My wife told me that wasn't nice. I was ready to get my gun that my grandfather left me. And my wife said, that rusty thing, that thing will backfire and you shoot yourself. I was, I was really hot. I was mad. But I gave it some time. And I started focusing on the Lord again. And what made me bitter at first made me better now. But you can say what you want to about me now. <laughs> I know who I am. <laughs> Come on. Don't have met me. You bald-headed. Yep. Love it. You little fat. Yep. Ate good this morning. Four eyes. Yep. I can't hardly see. I mean, isn't it amazing what we let upset us sometimes let it go stay focused on what God called you to do stay focused on things that make sense stay focused on the things of this world that are of God that will lead you to the path of righteousness and lead you down the path to success not only in this world but in the world to come well, that's another thing people don't like to talk about, don't like to think about, but it's very true. And it is this. This world is not our home. My heart has been heavy this week. I've had, in the last six or seven months, I've had maybe 10 or 12 funerals as a pastor. And about half of them have been from the coronavirus. As a pastor, I understand that. I get that. I, I've done my job. But what hurts about it is about half of those people I knew personally. They were my friends. Some of them I went to school with. Trusting God that since they left this world, I believe, and I had the opportunity to talk to them and spend some time with them and say to them, is it well? Between you and God, and I believe that they rest with God in glory. But we live in a world where we, we don't want to touch that kind of stuff. But it's real, y'all. Trust me, it's real. I've been around here 66 years. It's real. I don't know about you, but I want to stay focused on God. He's the key to it all. Dr. Frank Ray of Salem Baptist Church of Memphis, Tennessee, he makes this analogy and it's awesome. He talks about how, how your connection with God is so important. He simply, he speaks of like, like take for instance grass. And we all need, the grass grows uh, in the summertime so much so we have to go out and cut it. In the wintertime it, 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 it foliage is in but it's still alive, it's still functioning. As long as it's in the ground. Or what about a fish? Fish in a pond, in a lake, in a river, in an ocean. They are some of the awesome creations of God. But the greatest creation of all of mankind, of all, is God's creation of man. For we were made in his image. You want to know what God looks like? Be filled with his spirit. Live for him 
and go look in the mirror. I am so glad that I caught on to that. Because what I came to realize was, listen to this, when you stay in as God has made you and, what, and for what God has given you, you can live a tremendous life. Take that grass. As long as that grass is in that dirt, it'll grow, it'll grow, it'll grow, it'll grow. But take that grass out of that dirt and in two days' time it withers away. Or take that fish, a whale. As long as he's in that water, he runs it. But take a fish out of water, and I promise you, within an hour, he's dead. What about man? We were created in the image of God. But if we don't live for him, if we don't, are not in a relationship with him, if we don't call on his name in prayer, if we don't worship him and glorify him, if we're not in a relationship with him, and if you're not careful, we become the walking dead. I don't even like that, that mess on TV, but that was a good time. Use it, the walking dead, because if you're not in a relationship with God, I don't know that you're really alive. You might be alive in the flesh, but in the spirit, you might not be. So it's God, y'all. Stay focused on your relationship with God. Everything else will fall into place. I'm not telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know. I'm a boy from the North Room Projects. from a single parent. I lost my mother when I was 16. I saw my daddy four times. The fifth time I did his eulogy. But up from the projects, I live right across the way from Shorter College. I see y'all's dormitory backs every morning. Well, when the, when the foliage is down. Right off Mount Alto. I thought a boy from the projects would live off the side of Mount Alto. God. When you stay focused, he'll give you things you thought you could never have. Take your place you thought you never could go. Let you do things you thought you never could do. He'll bless you tremendously. I got eight minutes. I got eight minutes. Okay. So, God... And it is God through Jesus Christ. I love to say this. What other God and what other religion? Come on, think about it. What other God? Some of these gods never even ex were alive. But we serve a God who, th God the Father, who thought it not robbery to, to become three personalities for us. He was just as much God, but he surrendered himself, humbled himself, and became a man, flesh, so he could walk among us and understand what we were going through, understand what it was to feel pain. And he was ridiculed, he was criticized. From the very start, he was beaten with a can of nine whip. I mean, every time they whipped him and pulled it back, they pulled meat off his back. His back was like ground beef when they were beating on him. And throughout all of his ministry, he was, from the time he declared his ministry, Satan was on his trail. And it was the religious people that were against him. But he stood it all for me and you. What other God? Thought it not robbery to come down from his throne in glory. And he, he remained just as much God the Father as he was the son, as he walked the faith of earth, he didn't lose anything. He simply humbled himself to know what it was like to live on the earth with us. And so, 
to die for us, for our sins, so that we would have a right to the tree of life. No other God has done that, y'all. No other God. If you know of some other God that did that, see me after this program and I'll apologize to you. And the Bible has stood the test of time. It stood the test of time. And I don't know about you, I know there's a heaven and there's a hell. But if there were no heaven and no hell, I would still want to be a Christian. Beautiful life. Such a wonderful experience to walk these roads and you're not mad at people. To share with people. Saying good things. How you doing? God bless you. Every now and then I can pay it forward some, for somebody and see the expression on their face. And they say, what do you, you don't owe me nothing. You just pay me when you smile. Beautiful life to be a Christian. But you got to be sincere about it. You got to love God and place no one above him. He wants that. I close with this. Stay focused. Don't let little bitty things get you off track. Stay focused on your relationship with God. And I promise you, he will f- help you to find the time, the place, the way to do all the other things that you need to do and do it in such a way that you're happy as you're doing it. Even though we're going through this pandemic time, you'll still you, you have a, a sense of joy and a peace that surpasses understanding. Stay focused. Stay connected to God. The story that I want to end with is like this. There was a, happened to be one night at a man's house, and I can imagine when I think about out west now, the fire that people face, are facing. But this was a fire in the middle of the night, and everybody was running downstairs. The man went in the bedroom and said, hey, come on. He, got, he had two girls and one boy. Y'all, come on, come on, come on. He went back and got his wife. And they were coming down the stairs from their, from their bedrooms. And the stairway collapsed before the boy could come out of his room or come down the stairs. The fire was raging. They ran on out. And the boy had one thought. I'm going to run up in the attic. But the fire was everywhere. Or smoke was everywhere. When his father got out and saw that his son went, he said, where's my son? And then he could hear his son from the roof, Daddy, 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 I'm up here. He says, what are you doing up there? He said, the the stairs fell out, Daddy. I couldn't jump down. He says, where are you, Daddy? He says, can't you hear my voice? I'm over here. He says, Daddy, what am I going to do? He says, son, when I tell you I want you to jump, he says, Daddy, I can't jump. I can't see you. It's all the smoke up here. I, he says, you can hear my voice, can't you? He says, yeah. He says, well, just listen to my voice. And when I tell you to jump, jump. Finally, he told him, he said, okay, here I am. Here I am right now. Jump and I'll catch you. And the little boy was scared. He, oh, but he jumped. And his father caught him and saved his life. And in this life, you're going to have some fires. You're going to have some storms. You're not going to be able to see your way out. You stay focused. The voice of your father. What to do and how to get out of the trouble that you're in. Don't you ever give up on God. He never gives up on you. He loves you with an unconditional love. He knows what you've done, said, and how you messed up. But he still loves you. I'm, I'm not really talking about you. I'm talking about me. I am blessed, y'all. Think of the goodness of God. What he's done for me. I have those fires in my life. Don't panic. I just listen for his voice. Come over here. Step over here. 
be quiet, pray. Oh, I know it. The trouble is gone. God bless you. Would you pray with me, please? Father, I hope that something has been said that will help my dear brothers and sisters focused. Help them to read Galatians and know what they're up against. That the flesh the devil wants to use the flesh to, to overtake them. But if they walk in the spirit, if they trust you, the spirit will indeed dwell inside of them and keep them safe from spiritual disasters. Let them know if they stay focused, the best days are here. If they stay focused, no weapon formed against them will prosper. If they stay focused, you promise never to leave, never to forsake them. If they stay focused, they can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. If they stay focused, great is he that is in them, he that is in the world. Lord, I pray that we will go out of this place not the same way we came in. But everything I said helped him to remember to stay focused on God through Jesus Christ. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you and thank you for this time. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.